This is the place. Tom Riddle stood here as a boy. He returned here many years later. With another man. What's up everyone, the game 2K2 here again, and today I continue my review of the Harry Potter franchise with the video game adaption to the Half-Blood Prince. With the adaption to the Order of the Phoenix, it was obvious that Warner Brothers Interactive was onto something, but most of their ideas never really got off the ground, so they had another chance with the Half-Blood Prince. The gameplay is pretty much just expanded from the previous game. The game still focuses on the open world environment, and Hogwarts is pretty much the same with a few new elements added. The story for the game is a nice blend of the movie and the book as well, containing most of the elements from the movie while managing to squeeze in a few storylines from the book that weren't in the movie. Much like the previous games, you have to complete missions to progress through the story, but much like The Order of the Phoenix, you can complete these missions at your own leisure due to the open world setting, and just explore Hogwarts if you want. Because they expanded Hogwarts a little bit, it actually does make Hogwarts a little more fun to roam around in, even when not doing any of the missions. Also, navigating around Hogwarts is much better this time around. Instead of following footsteps around Hogwarts, you can call nearly Headless Nick, and he will show you how to get to areas of Hogwarts that you can't find. One of the positives about this is that he moves at whatever speed you're going in, whether it's walking or running. That's another nice addition, running. You have the choice on whether you can walk, jog, or run. I also love the camera angle this time around. One thing I never mentioned about the Order of the Phoenix is that the camera angle never stayed in the same spot. It always switched angles depending on where you were, and that got really aggravating. The camera angle for the Half-Blood Prince thankfully stays behind your character for almost all of the game, except for a few occasions, but even on those occasions, the camera angle still isn't terrible. Another navigation feature that's available that was also available in the Order of the Phoenix but I forgot to mention was the Marauder's Map, which you can access at any point in the game. However, it's not quite as good as Nearly Headless Nick when it comes to the navigation because it's good at telling you that you're going in the right way, but you can't tell what specific hallways you need to go down or if you need to take stairs, so it's better to use Nick if you're lost. The developers have also finally added activities to do. The game has the usual activity where you collect shields, which is a recurring activity in the franchise. However, there were three new activities added to the core gameplay, dueling, potions, and quidditch. First we have dueling, which is essentially the same thing as the battles from the Order of the Phoenix where you just throw spells back and forth at each other until your opponent is beaten. It's not really hard to master dueling, but it's kind of fun. While fun, there still are a few problems. One of the things that separate the battles from the Order of the Phoenix and dueling from the Half-Blood Prince is that the Order of the Phoenix, you could move your character a lot better, while dueling, your character is rather stiff and tough to navigate on a couple occasions. It does offer two-player dueling, but only for regular multiplayer and not online. I always thought this mode would be great for online gameplay because it would at least add more replay value to it. Next is Potions, which is a mode where you pretty much just put ingredients into a cauldron and make whatever it is you need to make. This is another fun addition to the game because it offers a bit of challenge because you have a time limit to complete whatever you're making. It's also challenging because putting ingredients into the cauldron is not as easy as it sounds because the controls are a tad bit sensitive with this mode. One slight movement and you might actually completely miss the cauldron. Navigating the ingredients is not the same on all versions when it comes to controls. For the 360, PS3, and PS2 versions, you use the analog stick. The PC and Mac versions uses the mouse, and the Wii version uses the motion controls combined with the buttons. To me, the Wii is easily the toughest because it took me forever to master potions with that control setup. Then of course we have the most anticipated mode, Quidditch. This was a feature that appeared in every advertisement. Warner Brothers Interactive even stated that it was the most loyal version of Quidditch described in the books and movies. So everyone's natural thought was that we would be able to play in different positions, and it would be a cool experience. And what did we get? Flying through stars on a broom trying to catch the snitch. This is Warner Brothers' so-called Quidditch match. It's not even a match! There's not even any challenge to it! Remember the Dragon Task mode from the Goblet of Fire? That's pretty much what this is. You barely navigate your character, and the game turns for you. 
How is that supposed to be challenging? To top it all off, you have a time limit, which the developers were not even nice enough to put on the damn screen, and you have to go through stars to gain more time. I'm sorry, if I've learned anything from the last couple of decades of gaming, it's that most games that make it a mission to actually go through circles, stars, or squares, or any other shape you can think of, it usually means that the developers were lazy or just didn't give a crap. For the longest time, I thought that Quidditch wasn't available once the story was over, but it actually is an unlockable mode known as the Flying Club. Not only that, but there are also other things that really keep this game from excelling, and the biggest problem is the replay value of the game. Despite three new activities and a bigger version of Hogwarts, the game's replay value grows shorter and shorter once the game's story comes to an end. The Dueling Club, Potions, and the Flying Club are not enough to keep this game's replay value anywhere near high. Like The Order of the Phoenix, I was very disappointed that you can only explore Hogwarts once the game is over. You can't access any of the other environments, like the Burrow, and I would have loved to explore Hogsmeade in this game. From a control standpoint, they go back and forth depending on what version you have. The 360, PS3, and PS2 controls are great for navigation, however they are a disaster when it comes to spells. The controls have a delayed response, especially when dueling, and because your characters are already really stiff when dueling, that doesn't make the delayed response any easier to deal with. The Wii is the exact opposite. The navigation stinks, but the spell casting is incredible, mainly because the controller itself feels like a wand, and the Wii Remote is surprisingly more responsive with spells than the regular controllers for the other consoles, which surprised the hell out of me and probably other gamers because the Wii most controls, despite how nice they are, usually have problems with their delayed response. The PC controls are much like the console controls overall. However, the PC controls were the easiest with potions, mainly because the mouse is a lot more stable. I was a little disappointed that the PC version still had the delayed response for the spell casting. And just in case you don't know what I mean by that, I mean with the regular controllers, if you hit the button several times, you're only going to get one or two spells. And that's a really bad delayed response. Graphically, the game goes back and forth as well on all versions. The 360, PS3, and PC versions are incredibly detailed with the environments, but not really anything else. The character models are horrendous in this version. In fact, the character models look far better in The Order of the Phoenix. The models in The Half-Blood Prince have serious issues. Their mouths don't move as good, and the eyes for all the characters are creepy as hell. However, Hogwarts does look phenomenal and surprisingly looks better in this game than The Order of the Phoenix, which is quite an accomplishment. The Wii version looks almost the exact same, with a couple more issues. The game's environments are a little bit more blurry looking, and the character models are even more blocky. But none of these differences are huge and are hardly noticeable. However, the PS2 has some really noticeable differences. The game's environments are a little too blurry, and the character models are surprisingly even worse. However, what really hurts the game's gameplay is a lot of the frame rate issues, especially during the dueling. The frame rate really takes a shot to the foot when the dueling gets a little more intense and there's a lot of spells going back and forth at the same time. Overall, it's better than The Order of the Phoenix by adding more features, but again, it's not one of those games you'll feel like playing over and over and over again, because there still isn't enough to make it stand up with other open-world games, but it still should please any Harry Potter fan who wants to play it. Well, everyone, that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time.